How's it going folks? Just doing a little bit of maintenance on the aquaponics, namely dosing up some potassium. So I thought I'd bring you along and give you a bit of a look at why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it as well. So to begin with, I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. Um, I've already put the date down there. Um, sulfur of potash, 2nd of August. I did iron yesterday. I think I previously did the potassium on the 17th. Uh, so I've just seen a few deficiencies, so I thought I'd give it another whack. I'm using sulfate of potash, and it's a roughly um, 7.5 grams per 1,000 litres. So I'm because I've got 1.6 thousand litres, I'm doing a 12 gram dose. Now, the way I do it is down here on my little chemical. Oh yeah, we've been tidying up around the place, and I've got somewhere to put all my bits and pieces now. Uh, just weighing out the 12 grams. So just putting it in my little scoop here. So that's 7.2. I don't mind if I go a little bit over because uh, I don't think it's going to hurt the fish at all or um, damage the plants. So I'll see how close we can get. Oh, 13.5, yeah. There we go, 12.5, we'll live with that, hey? Uh, so 12.5 grams there. And then we find the right lid, Robert. Not that one there. Oh, just here I've got um, other bits and pieces. Um, some, uh, what's this one? Molybdenum, um, some manganese, just some bits and pieces for knocking the grubs on the head. Potassium silicate, um, azomite uh, from an old garden buy, some uh, magnesium, uh, sorry, Epsom salts, or magnesium, and some calcium hydroxide and some potassium bicarbonate and other sprays and vinegars and bits and pieces. Um, so you don't need all these things to run an aquaponic system. They're just bits and pieces I've picked up along the way. And um, yeah, now I suppose we should go and mix this up and add it to the system. So all I do is take a clean jar, fill it up with some water from the system itself. This is just coming out of the uh, moving bed bioreactor here. And then dump this in and give it a good stir if I can find the swizzle stick. We'll improvise and use some scissors, hey? So just trying to get as much of that dissolved in there as possible. There are a couple of lumpy, chunky bits. So that should be all good. And then what I try and do is, between the three beds, uh, two of them are the same size. That's this one here and the one on the far side. And this netted bed is about double the size. So I try to give roughly, you know, a quarter of this amount to each bed just by putting it in where the water goes in. So try and judge this. There we go. I'll try and get you in shot next time. Here we go. About that much. And the rest of it under here with the broccoli. And while I'm under there, I'll explain why I think I need some more potassium. So I'm just going to deliver it down here at the inlet there and hopefully be able to tip all of it in. Uh, so the reason why I think I am a little bit down on the potassium is we've had fairly poor formation of the heads. They're not the largest heads we've had and some of them are starting to divide a little bit early. Uh, this one over here, whoops, sorry, the leaf. I can actually give this one to Jack. Jack lives chewing on these. Jack, do you want the leaf or not? You do want the leaf? Go eat the leaf. So back to the broccoli. We're not getting the largest heads form on them and they are starting to split or um, divide. Uh, before they start to put on a lot of size. And one of the uh, telltale signs I saw was some of the um, necrotic spotting we started to get on some of the leaves. So I just thought I'd better explain um, how you can tell a potassium deficiency. Generally what happens is you get a yellowing on the edge of the leaf and then it moves inwards towards the center and you end up with these little dead spots and then necrotic spotting or dead spots further on in the leaves. The deficiency looks very similar to magnesium deficiency which is also a mobile element but you generally have a lot more intervenial chlorosis uh, than which is the yellowing in between the veins themselves uh, then it's starting from the edge and moving in. Now they are both um, mobile elements which means it tends to happen on the older leaves and just quickly um, they actually have a bit of an interplay together as well magnesium and potassium if you had too much potassium into the system you can find it will lock out magnesium and there's a little picture there of Mulder's chart uh, which just shows the interplay between the different elements and um, as pertains to plants and them assimilating them so normally I 
feed the system with potassium using potassium bicarbonate but as the fish aren't feeding a lot at the moment their ph isn't dropping so i haven't been adding it in so that's why i'm using the sulfate of potash or sulfate of potassium to uh, bring the potassium levels back up there are other products I could use. I could also use potassium silicate but again that raises the pH. I have no need for it even though the silicate is good for cell wall growth and I could also be using the seaweed uh, powder, the uh, soluble powder I use or sea salt but unfortunately I've run out of both at the moment so that's why yeah we've run into this little bit of an issue and I remembered I had the um, sulfate of potash that I could add in so that's where we are at this point in time with the deficiency. And looking at the newer growth on some of these other plants, um, I am pretty happy that it has been arrested to a degree, uh, but I will be adding it in and topping it up for a little while longer, just to make sure there's ample in the system, not only for these plants, but the others as well. And I've just noticed now I haven't been very observant, but we're also starting to see what looks like aphids in there as well. So I might have to come back here with a pure crop one and give this a bit of a, um, a little bit of a spray. Uh, but what I'm thinking about doing, oh there's a nice head there, it's been hiding from me. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is just coming back and knocking off these larger heads now. Um, I'll give you a bit of a look at the harvest at the end of the video. And then thinning out a couple of these plants, maybe some of these older ones that had a little bit too much damage on them. And then give these small ones underneath a little bit of a chance to, um, yeah, put on some size. Uh, we'll see how we go. There's actually three or four plants in that little area there. So we might just cull one out, but anyway, I won't show you that today, uh, but I will show you the harvest of the broccoli at the end. Just quickly before we nip around the other side, I just wanted to let you folks on YouTube know that I have a very long video looking at Owen's system uh, over on the north side of Brisbane. It's a very impressive aquaculture based system that he's adapted to grow plants, so basically aquaponics, um, using a few different techniques a lot of people haven't seen before. So that video is going to be live next weekend, next Sunday. It'll probably go live around about 10.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and there'll be other times down the bottom there if you want to uh, check it out definitely come along if you want to look at a very impressive aquaculture slash aquaponics system and just a quick reminder too as well i do have that backyard aquaponics beginners guide it's an online guide for you folks who need a bit of a helping hand just starting out at aquaponics it is also an option for you to ask me for advice over there it's all explained on the page um, that is linked to up the top there and down in the description so check it out if you want a bit of a helping hand starting out with aquaponics that's enough of me spruiking. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at a few other bits and pieces. I've transplanted a couple of bits uh, from down the back in here. We've got some Chinese red amaranth that just went in there. Uh, it's from a old veggie pod. Oh, the chili, she's still going as well. Uh, and over here in this bed, I've had a few issues with aphids that I'll talk about in a minute. And I also replaced some of the bok choy we've taken out with some um, semi-advanced seedlings and another red chinese amaranth and yeah we've got two bok choy left i think yeah there's only the two bok choy left there nice decent size we're having another one tonight oh i took off um i'll tell you what we've been harvesting a couple of uh green onions uh one's gone from there and one's gone around from the other side a number of bok choy have come off recently and a nice decent head of broccoli as well as the ones that yeah you're going to see at the end of this video so pretty happy with what's coming out of the system for the time being. Oh, the aphid issues. We've got the aphids back on the chives. So I got very heavy handed with them the other day and cut them right back and then sprayed it with the pure crop one. And a lot of the aphids jumped ship before I could spray them. And you might be able to make out that there are a fair number that have crawled back on here. Just trying to block the sunlight here so I can give you a decent look. But there are little aphids all around in here. A uh, number of them, yeah, you might be able to see that one there moving. So the pure crop one, I think, knocked off the ones that were already on there. But a lot of them just fell off as I was cutting it into the uh, media itself. So um, I can give that another spray now, actually, while we're here. I've mixed up five mils of the pure crop one in half a litre or 500 mils of this spray jug. And I've just kept it in the shade. Uh, which, you know, it's winter here as well, so it's not exactly very hot and won't make it go off but just so I can um, use it over the next couple of days. And all I'm doing, if the camera will spin around with me, is giving it a liberal spray. And that is pretty much all it. And then over the next couple of days, Jack and I, won't we Jack? Hello Jack. Uh, we'll come down here and give it a spray. 
So um, I think I've got in all those little nooks and crannies there, but I'll leave it there for now. I'll come back and have a look later. So that's one thing I am having to do. Just quickly before I go, we'll feed the fish. Uh, the fish have had it very easy because someone uh, played around with the timer the other day and left it on. So the water temperatures come up to around about 21 degrees today. So yeah, definitely warm enough them for them to consume some pellets. They're not really hitting it, you know, as hard as they normally do through summer, as you can tell. But they are having a decent feed. I'll just give you a bit of an idea of the size of some of them. Come on, fellas, come up. There's definitely a number of them in there that are ready to munch on. So we should probably really get to doing that uh, very soon. Uh, filter wise and all that, I did do it the other day. Um, I gave that a bit of a clean out and I think I may have shown it in a recent video. Uh, but generally speaking, they're not getting enough feed to have to um, clean out the filter all the time. Uh, to the point that I actually noticed down in here, we have a chive that is sprouted in the biofilter because the seed has fallen from above from one of the flower heads. So yeah, probably in a month or so's time when things start to warm up, I'll definitely give the bio, uh, the, um, it's not a bio, sorry, it's like a fines filter with a lot of shade cloth in there that acts semi as a biofilter and also as a fines filter. That needs a bit of a clean out and I might look at actually cleaning out the bottom sludge from the moving bed bioreactor as well. I mean, it doesn't collect a lot of muck down there, but there is a little bit that ends up settling down the bottom of these little jobbies. So there we go folks, there's the three heads I've taken off and their variety was dr green dragon, I'm fairly sure. And you can tell it's very lumpy and bumpy, not really a uniform head development. So I'm thinking that has got something to do with the lack of potassium in the system, uh, mainly because I wasn't really keeping on top of it. The pH wasn't falling because it's winter and these little fellas who have polished off all their food, they weren't really, oh, he wants a little bit more. Um, they weren't really eating enough to add what little there is in their waste. To the system plus because um, they're not crashing the ph with adding a lot of ammonia to the system i wasn't having to top up with the potassium bicarbonate yeah it's just um me dropping the ball more than anything but yeah these guys will still taste nice uh we might give the big one to my mum and my sister's family and they can ha um, chew down on that one and these two here bianca and i might add one in with our bok choy and steak tonight uh, for dinner I hope that potassium information has helped a few of you folks out. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed already, do so. So you'll get a notification when Owen's system video comes online. Um, you won't regret it. It's an awesome looking system. And like I said, around about 6.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time this coming Sunday. And the other dates will be down in the description or on the screen here somewhere. Anyway, I'll stop uh, rabbiting on. I do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponic systems and your gardens are booming. And I'll drop my glasses and I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. So there we go, folks. There's a quick look at the broccoli. And I saved a couple of leaves for Jacks. There you go. Lunch away, boy.